Hello and welcome, I'm your host, Mefu, bringing you another video review and this time it is on Baldur's Gate 3 Early Access. So before we get into it, I'm just going to let you know that I've played both Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, completing them both. I know all the 5th edition rule set, uh, the saving throws, will power saves, dual classing, multi-classing, all the dice throws, all that, like, you know, crap. And that's not all, I've also played Divinity 1 and 2 and completed them both. So I know all the spells, all the tactics of Divinity 1 and 2 and yeah. So... Without the way, just to let you know, this is my opinion. Opinions are just like arsos, everyone has one. So uh, if you don't like my opinion, you know, that's your opinion of my opinion. <laughs> I don't favour Divinity, I don't favour Borders Gate. Uh, yeah, I know it's early access, it's the first 20 hours. Everything's subject to change. I mean, things could change completely, dramatically in the next year or so. And either way, I've got the game now. I'm forced to play it because I've, I've spent £50 on it. So I'm literally like, I will play this game. To get my money's worth, you know? <laughs> right, so I'm going to start with the visuals. Um, first impressions, the visuals are beautiful. I mean, I mean, I was doing the character selection screen. And uh, I think for the first time in my life, I made a good looking character. Normally they always turn out like Quasimodo from the Hunchback of Notre Dame or something. They're literally ridiculously bad looking most of the time. I can't do sliders at all. I'm not going to claim to even say I can do sliders. So I just try and do the bare minimum of them to make them like not look uglier than they already are. If you ever catch me doing sliders, like, it's not pretty. Trust me, it's not pretty. So in this game, it's actually really nice to have a good looking character for once. It actually makes me quite happy. And they've made some really beautiful uh, characters and presets. Yeah, so in the early access, the first 20 hours, you're kind of like thrown onto a beach. Uh, you get to explore these woods, uh, the wilderness, uh, caves, uh, kind of like cliffs and all those kind of things. Yeah, it was really beautiful. It really catches your eye. It's just really nicely done. Really like just visually perfect and it's uh, literally the beginning of the uh the game still i think they've still got like a year to go so it can make it even better than it really is i mean compared to Baldur's gate one and two it's insane i mean even compared to divinity two it's uh, pretty damn good it's so crisp it's so lifelike and it didn't feel like i was walking through a painting it felt like i was actually in the world which is a, a big thing for me i don't want to feel like i'm walking through a painting i want to actually feel like i'm immersed in the environment so yeah, the first 20 hours, uh, there's quite a lot to explore. There's loads of little hidden things as well. Like it was really tricky to navigate through it because half the time you had to like jump on your characters to get to these hidden spots. And because it's early access still, they haven't put like a jump on all the characters. You had to click them all separately, do a jump, click someone else, do a jump. And it's got really, oh God, Christ. So in the end, I didn't explore everything. I felt like I covered most of it though. I played the early access for like 30 hours. So I felt like I covered enough, but a lot of the time I felt a bit like peed off that I had to jump them all individually because it's just that like, quality of life things. And it wasn't just the one jump, there's quite a few jumps. So it wasn't just like, oh, it's a one off. I'll just do like a jump on each person. It was like a, oh my God, I have to do this every time. <laughs> they have to jump, it's like a platformer almost, but you have to click it at a one at a time. It was crazy. One thing I will say though, the music is absolutely incredible. Can't fault the music, love the music. It was amazing, I love the soundtrack. I want the soundtrack, where's my soundtrack? It was literally, <laughs> it was literally so good. Loved everything about it. Um, I just, you know, I, I don't know who they got to make it, but uh, spot on with the music. It adds so much to the game already. I found myself actually sitting in the, um, the menu screen at the start, just listening to the music. It was so nice. Right, so the combat uh, is literally turn-based. I, I really love turn-based games. That's actually my thing. But uh, <laughs> yeah, like uh, the combat was cool. It's just kind of like back and forth, bit of like, uh, you know, walk your warrior up, smack them, use a different smack to smack them harder, use another smack to smack them harder and fear them. It's a bit like that. And a bit of um, divinity rules kind of thrown into it, mixed with Borders Gate. I see what, the, what they try to do. Um, at the moment, yeah, it's pretty boring. There's not that much to it. Um, but I feel like they're going to expand upon that, hopefully. Because, uh, yeah, I just um, I found myself in some of the fights, especially the bigger ones. Because um, the AI is taking a long time to take their turns as well. So it's a lot of time the screen will freeze and you're like, shit, did my game crash? Am I, am I still here? And you're like touching stuff and like, eventually like, you just you start hitting the space bar. And you're like, oh god, Christ, I just skipped my, my character's turn. I just skipped my character's turn. So anyway, it's just like stuff like that happens quite a lot. The bugs and then the AI just takes forever. And yeah, it's just, it's just not as fun as uh, previous games, like uh, obviously Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. And it wasn't as fun as Divinity the Combat. It just felt very, um, almost like two steps forward and two steps back. 
Um, I feel like they could have made it more fun, but I think normally in D&D, uh, fifth edition the game doesn't actually become fun until like level four or five anyway yeah unless you're a wizard or cleric um but yeah when you're a wizard or cleric you only get a certain amount of spell cast per day so yeah in this game you literally you need to rest before you can cast more spells so i think at like uh level one or two you get like two or three casts of your main spells and then you have to use cantrips uh, the rest of the time which are just like kind of like fire bolts or just like kind of fluff spells but they're infinite use Kind of like firing an arrow or something like that. Yeah, so onto like races, builds, classes and all that kind of thing. There's so many choices for races and stuff. It's crazy. I think I went um, elf on both of my little playthroughs I did. Like one was an elf, a high elf and one was a half elf. There's just so many things you can choose from. Like you can be like a tiefling with horns. You can be like a kind of dragon kin thing with like a weird lizard face. You can be a human, obviously. It's just, there's so much, uh, like, choices. It's nice, actually. And as I said, all the characters look really beautiful. So you can always make a good-looking character. Well, or make an ugly one, either one. I mean, like, I mean, it's actually quite hard to make an ugly one. <laughs> Surprisingly, it's quite hard to make an ugly character. But, um, I'm pretty sure there's people out there that can manage that feat. So, yeah, final thoughts. I feel like I shouldn't have spent £50 on a, this early access game. I should have just waited like another like half a year maybe until it was like slightly more done or slightly more polished. At the moment I just felt like I felt a bit bored during the fights. I was a bit like uh, kind of looking at my phone. I was looking at the time. I was just saying, oh, do I have any chores to do today while well, I was waiting for my turns? Which obviously isn't that great because uh, I love turn-based games. Turn-based games are my thing. <laughs> so yeah, when I'm like looking at my phone and thinking about chores and stuff, when I'm playing a turn-based game, there's something going wrong. Besides that, the dialogue and stuff was really cool. I quite got into the uh, stories and the characters as well. Like, uh, I quite liked the companions. They all seemed pretty uh, believable of who they were. It didn't seem like bad acting at all. It was all beautifully, beautifully voice acted. I can't fault them on that at all. The only problem was when you tried to do like diplomatic approaches and persuasion checks and all that kind of thing, trying to be passive aggressive, <laughs> you literally come unstuck because you don't get any XP from doing that. That kind of annoyed me as well. So yeah, in the end, instead of being like, I'll save you, I was just like, stabby, stab, stab, stab. I want your XP, stab, stab. <laughs> so I feel like uh, eventually they'll address those issues. I got pretty good faith in Larian Studios as a company. They are probably one of my favorite uh, companies. Not just saying that because they're paying me to or anything. But I really, really do think they're going to make this game beautiful and make it amazing. So uh, in a way, like I don't so much regret the £50 spent. But I kind of do. In other words, I would have spent it later down the line anyway. But I kind of wish I waited a bit longer and then spent it down, uh, down the line when Larry made the game great. Anyway, that is the end of my video review. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe. I'm Mefru and I'll see you next time. Take care.